Rebound boards are especially useful in developing proper throwing and catching techniques and should be used throughout the year. The first drill in this sequence of throwing techniques is the tap drill. The tap drill is a great warm-up and coordination exercise that also develops finger and wrist strength, essential for all throwing techniques. The tap drill should be practiced close to the board and can be performed with two hands, one hand only, and with alternate hands. The first true throwing technique in the drill sequence is the wrist flick. Beginning athletes should start fairly close to the board. As you develop, you should move farther away. The ball never goes behind the head, and the throw is made primarily by a flick of the wrist and snap of the fingers. Like almost all throws in this sequence, the wrist flick should be practiced with both hands. When throwing the ball with a full arm motion, it is important that you use your entire body. As the ball is taken behind your head, your shoulder should rotate and generate torque for maximum power and speed. For accuracy, the ball should move in a straight line from back to front. At the end of the motion, the wrist should flick and the fingers should snap. To catch the ball, the fingers should be relaxed, spread widely, and slightly bent at the joints. Do not attempt to stop the ball, but continue in the direction of the pass, bending back the hand at the wrist with a light movement of the elbow or shoulder. The sweep or sling resembles the technique of a discus thrower. Do not bend the elbow when sweeping. The ball is thrown with a straight arm that sweeps low over the water. Rotation of the head, chin, shoulder, and hips is what gives the ball velocity. The push or screw is a great way to make a quick pass or shot while swimming. The screw should always begin with the non-passing hand assisting the pickup. As the ball is handed back to the shooting hand, the shoulders and body rotate into shooting position. As the ball is picked up, it is slightly drawn back to the shoulder release position. As the ball is released, the arm shoots forward in a piston-like motion. Another spectacular and effective technique is accomplished by teeing up the ball on one palm and shooting it off the tee with the fingertips of the opposite hand. The tee shot is relatively easy to learn, but it is difficult to perfect and is the one throw that should only be used with the strong hand. As the ball is teed up, the shooting hand and arm appear to be doing a normal crawl recovery stroke. To be a complete offensive player, you should master the backhand with both right and left hand. The backhand progression begins with the half backhand. The throw originates in the shoulder, with the elbow and wrist following. The backhanded wrist flick is thrown from a straight arm which is stretched out across the water at a 90 degree angle to the direction of the throw. While the elbow is straight, it is turned toward the direction of the throw. The advantage of the wrist flick is its quick release and short range accuracy. The backhand can be taken with either a bent or straight arm. Backhanded shots are thrown with a great deal of velocity because of the body torque, but are sometimes hard to control. However, as experience is gained through practice, a great deal of control can be achieved.
The faultless execution of the forward volley from a pass requires great ball handling skill and a flawless sense of timing. Anticipating the pass, the player rises out of the water with vigorous leg action. Concentration is the key to calculating the precise spot and moment to touch the ball. The start of the throwing action almost coincides with the completion of the shot. Recognizing the principle of the coordination correlation, Farago advocates practicing with both feet and head to improve overall hand-eye coordination. All the drills you've seen on the rebound board can and should be practiced with a partner. You can also practice shooting with your teammates. One player shoots five or ten consecutive shots, while the other blocks the ball and returns it to the shooter. But you don't need to be in the pool to practice water polo. You can improve your game at home, in front of the TV, or in your backyard with drills that will improve your ability to perform with the ball in the water. The number and variety of dry land drills with the ball is limited only by your imagination. <laughs>